wonderful uh, presentation, much appreciated. Um, Christina is, is the executive director of, of Bucharest Inside the Beltway. Uh, she's a history and a theater professor at the Metropolitan State University in, uh, in Denver. Um, as you all know, uh, uh, she's an award-winning Romanian-American historian, theater artist, uh, and uh, spoken word uh, poet. Um, she she taught actually at Georgetown University as uh, as the Yon Ratsu uh, teaching fellow here in DC, um, uh, and she taught at other universities um, um, yeah, before uh, MSU uh, Denver. Uh, Christina, would you like to to take the floor um, and uh, share with us uh, uh, some of your experience this year, the, the updates uh, from from the war zone? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Teo, um, for the generous introduction, but also for just the force that you are and also Ramona. Um, and yesterday was fantastic. I was able to attend about two thirds of the talks. Um, so it's an honor to be here. Um, I also think it's just amazing luck that I'm following Julieta because I'm so inspired by her presentation. And um, our schools have a lot in common, as you're going to learn. So now I would like to share my screen. Um, can you see my screen? Can you see my PowerPoint? You can, yes. Juliet, Juliet is yes. nodding, okay. Um, okay. So, The title of my talk is Worldwide Ukrainian Play Readings and More. So let's just dive in. Oh, and okay, here we go. <laughs> so um, just like Arizona State, MSU Denver is a unique school. Um, it is the most accessible and inclusive university in the state of Colorado. It was the first university in the United States to grant degrees to DACA students. And most of my students are uh, Mexican immigrants or the children of Mexican immigrants. Um, but we also have students from all over the world. Uh, last year, I had a student from Tigray, Ethiopia. Um, and of course, that was a very um, intense experience um, with the genocide and conflict. So. Um, but that just gives you a little sense. Um, we have local Colorado and also global student body, also first generation American for the most part, uh, college students, but not first generation college grads, meaning the first in their families to go to college. Um, so my big professional news this uh, school year is that in addition to the history department, I've joined uh, MSU Denver's theater and dance department, which I definitely never thought would happen to me in my life. Um, but I have been having a blast and it's a great blessing. You will see why. Um, the big news about Bucharest Inside the Beltway, uh, the arts group that Ruxandra Pop and I founded in 2014, um, we have moved to Denver with my move here three years ago, and this summer we unveiled our Rocky Mountain logo. So, Ukraine Plus. Um, you will see uh, exactly what is Ukraine Plus, um, but this is the artistic project at the moment for both Bucharest Inside the Beltway and MSU Denver's Theater and Dance Department. Um, with uh, one of my classes, we are producing this event in just less than two weeks. It will be their final exam. And it's a Ukraine um, solidarity event, but it's also freedom struggles worldwide. So you will see the plus, that is for absolutely everyone. All fights for freedom. And that's what brings us together as human beings. So we'll see if you look at the bottom of the poster, worldwide Ukrainian play readings, shattered symbolic gesture, Ukrainians of Colorado and more. Um, the visual art in, is by the esteemed artist Juana Kajal, and she's the um, artistic force behind Shattered Symbolic Gesture, which is her digital art combined with poems by a uh, Romanian diasporic and also Romanian in Romania women. So we're gonna have all of these things, I will say a bit more and the next slide, open to the public for free. Um, these are my students who will be presenting and performing this exciting freedom event. 
They're all currently taking my staging cultures, multiculturalism in theater class. And um, they are pictured here with MSU Denver Chair of Africana Studies, Professor Douglas Mapondi from Zimbabwe. Uh, Professor Mapondi is my closest collaborator at MSU Denver. We work on a lot of things together. So there is more to the lineup. Um, so this is the rundown as we know it at the moment. I'm sure it will grow. Worldwide Ukrainian play readings, these are in fact worldwide. Uh, when the war started, um, a really amazing theater critic who's American and he lives in Moscow, although I think he has since relocated, I hope, um, he got the ball rolling, gathering all, all plays by Ukrainian playwrights into a Google Doc beta database and sharing this database with theater artists in many countries. And each group has selected plays from the database um, and performed them as stage readings so that's not a full production. And this was happening on Zoom, it's happened in person, it's happened in cities all over the world. And this is Denver's manifestation of this amazing phenomenon. And I'm really, really honored. I already mentioned Shattered, so that's going to be um, a video slideshow of the visual art and poetry um, read alongside. Ukrainians of Colorado, that's our group here in Colorado um, for the Ukrainian diaspora. They've been so active um, in helping victims of the war and refugees, and uh, we'll have a couple guest speakers. I have a student from Iran, and she will present a photo slideshow um, of victims who have died in the protests. Um, there will be a Black Lives Matter spoken word poem presented by one of my students, written by um, arguably one of Colorado's most famous actors, uh, and his name is James Brunt. He performed this poem at the Colorado State Capitol. Um, so it's a very important poem here in Colorado. Uh, we will have Ukrainian classical music on the violin because one of my students is um, an expert violinist. There will be a portrait memorial for victims of the Club Q anti-gay hate crime that happened here about two weeks ago in Colorado Springs. And there, of course, will be more, I'm calling them acts, um, or um, we would say presences, in honor of freedom struggles everywhere. What about the fundraising? Well, in order to get around um, university um, bureaucracy, um, we will do it two ways. The Ukrainians in Colorado community will make traditional Ukrainian baked goods, and we will sell them at the showcase, obviously raising money for Ukrainians of Colorado. We will also have a list in the event program with suggested charities helping out Ukraine. So please tell your friends about Ukraine Plus. Let's spread the good word far and wide because we just have two, uh, two under two weeks until showtime. And um, I've already uh, shared an announcement across social media. I'm going to be um, unveiling the official poster today that you just saw, and um, there will be more out there about Ukraine plus. So um, that is the upcoming Ukraine relief effort, um, but there has been a lot more going on uh, since February 24th. And I just wanted to share um, one person's um, effort, what it looked like um, since the war started. So of course, here in Denver, Colorado. Um, here, Right after um, my university organized a presidential panel on Ukraine with our university president, um, who's actually quite a Washington insider. Um, I won't go on too much about her, but she's on all sorts of important committees and uh, was in the Air Force and very impressive person. Um, but the, there was a problem with this panel. The problem, there were a couple problems. The first was that there was no Ukrainian representation. And this was the panel that was broadcast, you know, all over Colorado. I had been invited uh, to the panel. I was the only person of Eastern European descent on this American panel. Also problem was that one of my colleagues was openly and, and honestly, very enthusiastically pro-Putin. You can imagine how upsetting that was. So in my own way, I believe Ukraine Plus is writing that wrong. We will have Ukrainian representation and obviously no pro-Putin activity. Um, so since the war started, 
I already mentioned um, the Twitter activity um, when we were speaking to Adrian. So we had so many academics and activists on Twitter um, sharing, you know, trying to get the word out about what was happening and also fighting for justice. Um, uh, I, when I had questions, uh, both ambassadors, Rosa Pepe and Gittenstein, got back to me immediately. I already shared just how amazing Adrian Tudorake at the Romanian embassy in D.C. was. Um, he, you know, it was like he dropped everything to clear up this mystery um, and got really, really important intel out to the American people about Romania. So, um... I also found myself operating as an unofficial liaison uh, for, a medical, for a medical humanitarian NGO named Project Hope, uh, headquartered in DC. Um, I will explain how I even am on their radar in a subsequent slide. They asked me, I think I was the only Romanian person that they knew, so that's why they reached out to me, uh, to gather all information and contacts in Romania and Moldova I could find, helping out with refugees. Um, and then I would screenshot all of this and send it to them. And it was in real time, constant, like trying to get information. Uh, and so that they could set up shop in the region and help. I also connected Project Hope with Blue Heron Foundation. Um, I really appreciated the shout out from Stefania yesterday. Um, so I'm happy that that collaboration worked out. And finally, I had lunch with the wealthiest woman in Colorado named Barbara Barnes Grogan, who is seriously a hero. Um, and I guess what I said um, persuaded her enough that she donated a very substantial sum to the charities um, listed in the previous line. So humanitarianism. So um, I really believe that we all need to leap up and help in the ways that we know best. So um, that's exactly what I did. And so this is the Why Pro Project Hope, why the medical charity in DC. Um, both of my grandparents were volunteers uh, for International Medical Corps, which is a medical charity that's based in Los Angeles. Um, and so I grew up knowing I was always around International Medical Corps, um, raising money. I was the kid with the bake sales uh, in middle and high school, raising money for International Medical Corps. Um, and so then when I had an opportunity to volunteer myself, this was the summer between my master's and PhD at Oxford, and it was right after the tsunami. And so I had the opportunity to volunteer um, and work with medical doctors in Sri Lanka. And so these are a couple of photos from that summer. Um, the group photo is from a mental health conference that uh, IMC organized um, in the south of Sri Lanka um, on the southern tip. Um, and the one with um, just me and my colleague Abraham uh, from Eritrea. So um, NGOs hire people from all over the world who run the offices um, in the respective countries that they're trying to help out. And so Abraham was in the Colombo office and um, here we are next to an IMC sign. So working with IMC, that is how I know the president of Project Hope because he had previously worked for IMC. His name is Robbie, he is from Lebanon. And so when the crisis broke out, he contacted me because I'm the only Romanian that he knows. So, um, as a lot of us have um, family in Romania in that part of the world, um, I have a very important family member who lives in Galatz, which is on the border with Ukraine. And I have been living in a state of terror since the war started about her, checking in on her every day. Um, my partner and I are responsible for her and that includes financially. And we will finally be able to see her in March of 2023. And I seriously cannot wait for that. This is my Matusha Veronica. So if you know 90s hip hop, you know this lyric. This is from Changes by Tupac. Um, and I'm going to read it and explain how it kind of loops into everything that I've just shared. Let's change the way we eat. Let's change the way we live and let's change the way we treat each other. So we have to change how we treat each other, 
just individual interactions and also diaspora interactions, they need to be positive in considering all of us as human beings. That is how we create the bigger change so that we can act when the global problems arise. So I really hope that my little presentation shows how Ukrainian relief efforts can manifest in a way that um, align with somebody's expertise and knowledge and life experience rather than having to, you know, officially do something in line with, you know, the diaspora. So I leapt into action doing what I knew how to do. Um, and I also think I want to shout out to Teo because his intro talk yesterday about um, inclusivity is really, really important. We live in the United States. Um, we must break out of the Romanian bubbles that I know a lot of us live in. And um, otherwise, I really, that's that just further leads to polarization um, and global conflicts like we see in Ukraine. So that is the end. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Thank you for this sharing and for leaving us on that on that note, bringing us back to the theme of, of uh, inclusivity, of, of uh, empathy and solidarity, and uh, uh, springing into action in, in critical moments. Uh, um, thank you.